Hello everyone, so today we'll be synthesizing bromine on a one molar scale, which means we're going to get one mole of dibromine. So we're using the classic TCCA plus uh, bromide plus hydrochloric acid method. And pretty much this just makes chlorine in situ. Chlorine then reacts with the potassium bromide to form your potassium chloride and bromine. Okay, so let's measure our reagents. The first thing you have to do is get your potassium bromide. Mm, well, the spot's perfect. Next, we need 78 grams of trichloroisocyanuric acid, which sometimes is also called trichloroestriazotriome or whatever. So this is some pre-powered up stuff. I am an expert measuring, measurer. Hydrochloric acid, you can see a tiny bit of fuming in air, that's expected, because this is fairly concentrated. Here I have a one neck, three, uh, not one neck, uh, uh, um, three neck, one liter flask here in a heating mantle. And first, we're going to add our TCCA, our potassium bromide. Here's 100 milliliters of water. You can see there's a yellow color. I believe that this reaction actually forms uh, tribromo, like tribromo cyanuric acid or something. So you can use a stir bar. What I'll be using is this mechanical stir. Now, we take our hydrochloric acid and we add it in. So hydrochloric acid. Um, the left neck of the flask, and on the right neck, I'll set up a distillation apparatus. You can use a Liebig condenser cooled with ice water if you have that. However, I have something better than a Liebig condenser. I have a Friedrichs condenser, a Friedrichs condenser, or Friedrichs condenser. I don't know. This thing's hyper efficient. Focus. Uh, you can see the coils on inside of here are very close to the actual walls, and it's very large, like a cold finger, which means that this is very efficient at cooling. Again, it would be a good idea to grease the joints with sulfuric acid. This is my water chiller. Okay, so I set up the trap now in case any suck bike occurs, which it definitely will. Um, now I'm gonna add a bit of sodium metal bisulfite. This brand of stump remover is pure sodium metal bisulfite. Uh, you could also use sodium thiosulfate if you have that, or some other reducing agent. It may even iron out, like the iron oxide, um, the rust removing chemical. The metal bisulfite actually forms sulfur dioxide gas upon reaction with bromine so it's quite annoying now it's time to start the reaction now unfortunately due to me choosing a fancy flask that has the necks going upward instead of sideways um i can't actually fit my stir on top of here however i can still stir it by hand and that's good enough you can see here that the mixture has become quite chunky Yeah, well, time to add in the HCl. Open, get a bit of HCl in there. Give it a good stir. Hot, so that's very interesting. Now, TCA plus HCl actually gets colder, which means that the displacement reaction of the chlorine with the potassium bromide itself is actually exothermic. Move this. You can actually see some bromines already boiling with that's really boiling itself now. Blood red. Look at that. Okay, I think I can raise up the heating a bit now. I suspect it's actually the hot air that's uh, distilling the bromine along. And if you're wondering, uh, yeah, the sasser's up, and that's because the setup is very well sealed, which means that I don't actually smell much. There's just a faint smell of bromine, but nothing else. And I did try with the sash closed and went outside, nothing at the smell of the uh, fume of exhaust, so, well, very light. So, yeah, it's, it's not really anything. I got both doors open to have some um, ventilation because it's a very hot day. It's, like, almost summer or something. Okay, so the bromine's done distilling, so I've swapped the gas tap on left side flask instead of that stopper, and I'm just going to blow air through the setup to purge out the bromine vapor. And you can see we had a little suck back, but that's fine. That's why we had the trap there. Now I'm going to remove this receiving flask, which is also connected up to scrubber, and swap it in for a normal flask. So the apparatus is airtight. It's sealed, except for that one gas adapter, which I'll just let it cool down like this, and I'll show you why later. 
but yeah, that's sort of it for um, dealing with this part. So we're gonna next we're gonna deal with our bromine and purify it up a bit, make it dry and all that stuff. Okay, so unfortunately, there are some kids outside of the window where my fume hood vents, so I'm not able to do this step inside under the fume hood. However, I am outside here, outside the garage, and there's a bit of wind, so that should, hopefully will help. So now it's time to dry our bromine. First step is to pour it all into a separatory funnel, carefully. Okay, so I'm dubbing over this because I was wearing my gas mask and you could barely hear what I was saying. It was very hard at least. So now that we have our bromine added into our separatory funnel, we're going to separate the bromine layer off and discard the water layer. Now we add the bromine back into the funnel and then around 20 milliliters of sulfuric acid. Now comes the part that's a bit scary. If you didn't separate your bromine well enough from the water and you shake it like this, it will get very hot and you're going to have a high chance of bromine boiling and spraying everywhere. However, because I, I separated mine very well in fact i left a tiny bit of bromine with the water layer just to be extra safe um it's fine like nothing really happened it didn't get really any hotter so now that we have this shaken up we're gonna let it separate and we should get our br dry bromine on the bottom layer and sulfuric acid on the top layer and now that we have our separated layers we can drain it off so the bromine you could distill it if you don't want sulfuric acid, but we're going to store over sulfuric acid anyways, so no point in doing so. Here's the bromine bottle, which I'll talk about later in the video. We'll end drain all of the bromine in, even if we get a tiny bit of sulfuric acid and that's fine, the bromine's already over sulfuric acid. So, I forgot to remove the stopper again. So we're going to do that, and now we're going to drain it off. We're going to pour our sulfuric acid off and discard it as well into this flask. And we're going to deal with the bromine in it later as well. Okay, so here I have our bromine, and I'm just going to stop it all up nice and well. Okay, now it's full of disposal. Now, to get rid of the bromine, first we add a bit of sodium metabisulfite. It's a bit angry. Now we have water. You can see no red fumes escape now. Add a bit more sodium metabisulfite. Now, the only minor annoyance is that this reaction does form sulfur dioxide gas. You can see it gets angry. Now we add water. And the bromine fumes just disappear. Just like that. The only issue is that the stopcock, even though it's Teflon, gets stained with bromine. So you have to give it a bit of a soak in this stuff and heat it up a bit to get the Anyways, now it's time to deal with our apparatus. So, like I said, I sealed it off and let it cool down uh, closed, so there's a little light vacuum in there. So I'm going to add some sodium metabisulfite into here, and now this tube is connected to a gas adapter, which is connected to the flask. So I'm going to open it, and the vacuum pulls the solution in. And that removes most of bromine fumes, and then I can just take it off and pour in more sodium metabisulfite into the whole apparatus, stir it up nice and well and all that stuff to mix it all together and neutralize the bromine off. Now let's do a little fun experiment, which is classic. You take your bromine, which um, I'm gonna talk about this bottle later, uh, and some aluminum foil, and then we stuff the aluminum foil into a beaker, we take, um, take out some bromine, and we'd add it onto the aluminum foil, and we wait. Anyway, so here's our bromine bottle, and you can see it's a very weird one. I found this on, um, on a Chinese website, but, uh, you can buy this on AliExpress as well. It's called like a clay bank auction bottle, whatever. I'll link it in the description because it's pretty good for sealing, um, volatile, fuming things like bromine. 
So here's how I store it. So it's literally just this. There's a glass cap and there's a normal one. The glass cap, I greased it with some plain grease. Uh, I would recommend using um, vacuum grease because uh, the normal grease gets sort of brominated by fumes. But that's a good thing because it means that it is preventing fumes from exiting the bottle. And the bromine on top of it is some sulfuric acid to um, keep the bromine, uh, keep the fumes down a bit. Uh, the bromine is able to dissolve in the sulfuric acid, so it still does fume a tiny bit in the bottle, but you can see it's a lot better than if it was just pure bromine there. And the only way to get bromine out of this bottle, unfortunately, due to this weird uh, lid design, is to use a pipette or a glass syringe with uh, a length of glass tubing attached to it. Otherwise, you're going to get bromine all over the bottle, um, sealing part of it. And I, I did that. It's not very good. So, yeah. Unfortunately, the only way to get this bromine out is using a pipette or some other, like, tube to pull it out of there. But otherwise, it's not bad as storage, because ampules, you have to break them, and then if you don't use all the bromine, it's gone to waste, and you have to make a new ampule. But with this thing, you could just pour the bromine back in, so very convenient. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you guys in the next one.